Hey, I'm Darlene and you're watching a rapid fire art tutorial. In this video, I'll cover my method for drawing a smile with teeth, step by step. I'll be using a smooth drawing paper, a single HB pencil, a plastic eraser, a kneadable one for precision erasing, a soft tissue, and a homemade blending stump. You can find out how to make one in the description. Let's get started. First, we'll need some construction lines. Start by lightly drawing a shape that resembles a slice of watermelon. In case you're curious, here are the dimensions of mine. Next, draw a line down the very center. To each side of your watermelon, draw a slanted line to mark the boundary for the teeth. The next step is to draw a guideline or boundary line for the top row of teeth. I want the top row of teeth and gums to be as visible as possible, so I'm going to draw my guideline all the way down here. If you want some of the bottom teeth to show, draw an additional guideline below that, that curves up at the ends. The next step is to draw the top and bottom lip. Let's start with the top lip, drawing it along this line. I'm going to create a shape that dips down at the center. And then, it comes up through the guideline toward the corner of the mouth. And then I'm just going to bring my stroke down at the very end. Now draw the other side in a similar way. For the lip's top edge, I'm starting at the center, drawing a somewhat shallow curve, and as I reach out toward the corner of the mouth, I'm tapering the shape, making it more narrow. Once you're done, erase the construction lines inside the lip. Next, draw the bottom lip while using the bottom of your watermelon shape as a rough guideline. Taper the end. To make the bottom lip look more realistic, let's tweak the upper edge so the form looks less rigid. All we're going to do is bring the sides in very slightly. It's a very small change, but it makes quite a big difference. Let's draw the top row of teeth next. There are two ways to approach this. The first approach is easy. For this example, let's focus on the right half. We're going to section this whole area into five spaces, making sure the front tooth is the widest. I'm making mine about a third of the space. And then as you work your way out to the side of the mouth, the sections should become narrower and narrower. There are more teeth along the side, but they are hidden from view. These are just general guidelines. If you want, you can adjust the angle or width of each tooth so it fits your preference. If you're happy with the spacing and angle, draw a mirror image on the left side. You can do this by using a ruler to measure each section. Once the guidelines are in place, you can then draw each tooth without worrying about running out of space or accidentally drawing them the wrong size. Tooth height can vary a lot, so I'll leave that part up to you. After you draw the top row, the bottom row will be a lot easier to draw. You won't need to make any guidelines because you can use the top row as a reference. For example, 
the lower two front teeth are a bit more than half the width of the upper two. And then the rest of them are about the same width as the first two. To make the rest of this example as clear as possible, I'm going to fully expose each tooth. Alright, so teeth along the side of the mouth appear to overlap each other when viewed from this angle. So drawing guidelines for these teeth would probably add more confusion. So I think it's better to draw these ones freehandedly. If all of your bottom teeth are visible in your drawing, make sure both rows of teeth are somewhat similar in total width. Depending on how open the mouth is and how wide the lips stretch, you may not see all the teeth at once. The second way to approach drawing teeth, the one I'm going to use, is I'm going to draw each tooth as I go while visualizing the others and making measurements as I go along. If this makes you feel uneasy, try the first method this time and then when you feel a little bit more comfortable, maybe that's tomorrow or next week, try the second method. Drawing the teeth without the help of a grid will definitely help you in the long run. Okay, let's draw some teeth. Along the vertical line, draw a Y shape. The top of the Y is the gums. Let's round off this corner of the tooth. I'm going to draw this tooth very wide, making it about a third of this entire space. Round off the top of the visible part of your tooth. Come down and round off the bottom corner. To draw the one on the left side, measure the width and transfer your measurement over. Now as we work out toward the side of the mouth, I'm going to draw each tooth shorter than the two front teeth. But you can of course draw them many other ways. You can do a quick Google search to get a bunch of ideas. Draw another Y shape leading into the next tooth. This tooth is going to be more narrow. You can draw it similar in shape to the previous tooth, or make it look rounder if you like. Use the guideline as a rough boundary to draw within. Draw another Y shape yet again, leading to the next tooth. Form the tooth so that it's similar or narrower in width than the last. This tooth is usually sharp and pointy along the bottom edge. Just keep repeating the process while making each tooth more and more narrow as you go. These ones are also quite pointy along the bottom edge. When you reach the side boundary line for your teeth, Draw the edge of the gums by creating a convex curve which ends below the top lip. Erase unneeded construction lines as you go. I now have a total of 5 visible teeth on this side. Now I'm going to do the same on the left. It's okay if you can't draw an exact mirror image because no natural set of teeth are exactly the same on each side. There can be differences in gum height, tooth angle, shape, rotation, sharpness, length, etc. I will try to measure and roughly match the right side, but it's really not a big deal. Anyway, use any measuring tool you have to measure the width of each tooth and draw them one at a time. To draw a mirror image of this tooth, I'm measuring the width and transferring it to the left.
To match the position of this part of the gum, we can draw an invisible line all the way across. And we can do the same thing to get the tooth height. I'm making sure that they're level horizontally. Use the same method to draw the rest of them. Let's erase any unneeded construction lines before we move on. All we have left to do now is draw the bottom row of teeth. For the top row of teeth, we drew the gums using a Y shape. Down here, we'll just flip that Y shape upside down. If your bottom teeth aren't very exposed, the gums may not even be visible at all. This tooth will actually be a lot narrower compared to the one at the top. Let's draw this one a bit more than half that width. Let's make the corner of the tooth round. Let's mirror this tooth on the left side. Now let's draw the rest of these teeth about the same size as the previous two. Draw the gums or a gap between each tooth if you want. I'm shaping these teeth so that the lower portion is slightly more narrow. As you draw, keep in mind that the lip gradually covers more and more of the teeth, so the gums may become less visible or not visible at all. This tooth is typically pointier than the other front-facing teeth. The rest of the molars in the back of the mouth are quite jaggedy. Each of these teeth that are further back in the mouth may have several peaks or pointy edges. Let's quickly draw the rest of these teeth and move on to the next step. If you're struggling to draw the teeth in the back, picture the entire row in full. Here's a small optional detail that you can add. When the mouth is open wide, you may see some pink flesh inside the mouth around the corner right here. So I'm going to add that on each side. Now just erase all the construction lines. All right. Make sure the pencil strokes between each tooth are thin and light. If the space between each tooth is thick, they may come across looking stained or like there's a big gap between each tooth. If that's what you're going for, then please continue on to the next step. Now we're ready to shade. If you're not familiar with shading and lighting, please watch the video in the card or in the description before you continue. In order to shade, we'll need to decide on where the light source is coming from in this scene. I'm going to place my light source in the top left. Regardless of the light direction, let's first shade a flat layer of graphite on the top lip, just to make it a different shade from the paper. Make sure a large portion of your graphite is exposed, then hold your pencil in an overhand grip like this. Use the side of your lead to scribble on a scrap piece of paper until your strokes become thick and smooth. Hold that grip and shade a solid layer of graphite across the entire lip. Try to keep your strokes close together so your shading looks nice and smooth. My light source shines down from above, so the bottom edge of the lip 
the part that turns away from the light, will be in shadow. It's good to think about the shape of your subject in 3D to help you know where to shade, where the form faces the light, and where it starts to turn away. I'm going to shade lighter gradually as the surface turns into the light. Try to account for even the most subtle plane changes. For example, the leftmost side of the lip might face away from the direct light to a very small degree. This part of the lip recedes as the lip is being pulled back, so it should be drawn slightly darker. The entire right side of the lip is facing the opposite direction of the direct light, so I'm going to shade it much darker than the left side. In some areas, I'm using the tip of my pencil to shade because I'm trying to fill in all those tiny white dots, valleys on the paper's surface, which make the drawing look grainy. We will eventually blend those out later with a different tool, but try your best to shade as smoothly as you can right now. Now let's do the same thing for the bottom lip. Shade a light solid layer of graphite across the entire lip. Now shade areas that face away from your light source. For me, that's the top and bottom edge, the right side, and the end of the lip, the part that recedes as it's being pulled into a smile. Again, picture your subject in 3D to work out the areas of light and shadow. Just like the top lip, the right side of this lip will also be in shadow as it faces away from the direct light. If you want, you can slowly build your shading up in layers instead of applying a lot of pressure on your first pass. Even though the lip is stretched into a big smile, I still want to make it look very plump, so I'm shading the very bottom edge. The darker the shadow, the more plump the lip will appear. If you extend that shadow all the way up here, the lip may look Botoxed because most lips are generally less plump near the ends. Let me just exaggerate that shadow some more so you can see how it looks and then I'll just erase it later. This edge curves in, away from the light. Once it's shaded, you'll start to see the lip become plump. I'm giving it a gradual value change as the lip curves toward the light. If you want to make the lips appear more realistic, add a few slight wrinkles. I'm going to skip that step to save time, 
But if you want to learn how to draw and shade lip wrinkles, please watch my detailed tutorial on drawing lips. Again, I'm using the tip of my pencil to fill in those grainy looking areas so the shading looks smoother. This part of the lip recedes as the lip is being pulled back. It angles away from the direct light, so I'm also going to shade it slightly darker as well. These specific areas that you shade are dependent on the shape you want to define for your set of lips and the direction of light that you chose. If you want to learn more about light and how to shade, please visit the tutorial in the card or in the description. Let's shade inside the mouth now. You can shade it as dark as you want. I'm going to make it really dark to give the drawing a very high contrast so it'll really pop. When you get to this central area, shade much lighter so it looks like there's a tongue. And then finally, shade the bit of flesh at the corners of the mouth. I'm shading mine quite dark so they appear very subtle, but you can shade them lighter if you like. Moving on to the gums. Shade a light layer of graphite across the gums. Okay, once you're done, let's shade the far left and right edge so it appears round instead of flat. Next, shade each of these crevices very lightly. Our gums kind of stick out above each tooth, so visualize a bump above each one and shade around it. Make the value change around each one gradual so they look like bumps. And then add a cast shadow right below the top lip. Time to shade all the teeth. Natural teeth aren't exactly white, so let's shade a very, very light layer of graphite over each and every one of them. From here, we're going to give each tooth some subtle shading to give them more of a 3D shape. First, let's shade the crevice between each tooth, an area where light rays may have a difficult time illuminating. Next, let's shade the surface of each tooth to indicate where each one turns away from the light. Areas facing the light directly should remain the lightest. If you're not quite sure where to shade, visualize or look at your subject from various angles to get a better idea of the shape of each tooth. Along the outer edge, the forefront teeth are the most flat, while the others are quite round and stick out in varying degrees. You can use this image and plop in your light source, wherever it may be, to work out roughly which areas will be in shadow. Let's go back to what we were drawing. All right, so another thing to consider is teeth that are further inside the mouth may appear darker as they may be blocked from a majority of light rays. So you may wanna shade them slightly darker to account for that. Okay, using this tooth as an example, let's shade the crevice very lightly. 
try to keep your shading smooth and subtle where you can. My shading is darkest near the gums and where this tooth touches the other. As I work my way out of the shadow area into the light, I'm using less pressure so the value transition appears gradual. Now the darker you shade, the deeper the crevice will look. But do be careful because overly dark shading can make teeth look stained. If your light source also comes from the left, like mine, you'll want to shade the right side of this tooth, giving it the appearance of a round surface. To make it turn away from the light source even more, you can shade it even darker, while making sure any surface that faces the light remains the lightest. Let's shade these two teeth in the same way. Although I do recommend shading teeth very lightly, I'm going to shade them much darker than I normally would, just so you can see what I'm doing more clearly. And then let's work on the rest of them. Start by shading the crevice between each tooth very slightly. And then shade any surface that doesn't face the light directly. Remember to darken teeth that are further inside the mouth to give the drawing a little more depth. Now for the lower teeth. I will mainly shade the side of each tooth and the area directly behind the lip. And then for each of the jaggedy teeth in the back, I'm shading the valley between the peaks. If the teeth look as though they come forward too much, shade them a little bit darker to push them further inside the mouth. And then we're going to shade the rest of them in a similar way. Once you're done, let's blend all of the teeth so our shading looks really smooth. Grab a soft tissue and wrap it around your finger. Then carefully spread the graphite around, being very careful not to enter dark areas of your drawing. Once the tissue becomes dirty, move to a clean spot. For small areas, like the bottom row of teeth, fold your tissue over several times. And then fold it this way a few times until you get a very pointy tip.
It gets dirty very quickly, so you can rotate the tissue to a cleaner spot, or open it up and roll it again. Once each tooth looks smooth, you can move on to the next step. Okay, now for this step, you can use a regular plastic eraser. Cut it so that you get a sharp edge to work with. I want higher precision, so I'm using a kneadable eraser. I'm pinching my kneadable eraser till it's nice and flat. Then along the lightest area of each tooth, we're just going to create a bright highlight. We're erasing some graphite so the tooth looks really shiny. I'm folding the eraser in on itself to get a clean spot. Continue along to make all the other teeth look shiny along the lightest area of each tooth. This is the lightest area of this tooth, so I'm going to put a highlight right there. And let's do the same thing on the lower set of teeth. Use your tissue again to blend the gums. The next step is to blend the rest of the drawing using a blending stump. I'm using a homemade one. If you want to learn how to make a blending stump, click on the card in the top right of this video or in the description. I'm just using very gentle strokes to spread the graphite around, getting it to fill those tiny valleys within the paper so the drawing looks less grainy. Be careful when blending around the teeth that they don't become fuzzy. If you need to blend really close to a tooth, use your pencil to blend the graphite instead. Continue blending areas of your drawing that look grainy.
The reason I didn't use this blending stump on the teeth earlier was because it does too good of a job at spreading graphite. So in lighter areas of a drawing, it can actually cause a lot of unwanted blemishes if I'm not careful. I'm just using the lightest amount of pressure. I'm actually barely touching the paper right now, just going back and forth many times to slowly blend the graphite in. When using any type of blending tool, you may need to go over your work and remove subtle blemishes. It's an optional thing. Anyway, I'm doing that with a kneadable eraser. I roll it to a fine tip and then just dab those small blemishes away. You can also use a very sharp solid eraser. The very last step is to add touch-ups. Look over your entire drawing to see if there are any areas that you can improve on. I think my drawing looks very washed out where the gums are, so I'm going to shade the gums a little bit darker. As I mentioned earlier, I did shade the teeth much darker than I wanted to, to make it show up better on video, so you could see what I was doing more clearly. So the last touch-up that I want to do is make all the teeth lighter. If your teeth are also too dark, you can use a kneadable eraser to lighten your drawing up. Just dab it onto the drawing and lift the graphite away gently, a little bit at a time. If you don't have a kneadable eraser, rubbing a soft tissue across the area will remove some graphite. By the way, there's a very obvious glare across the left side of my drawing and it has been bothering me for the entire tutorial. So let me cover the light up so you can see what it looks like without all that glare. Anyway, you've reached the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support what I do on this channel, check out my store for items like the Pencil Artist t-shirt. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Click the notification bell to get notified whenever a new video is released. See you in the next one.